Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So Fudgy's here, he's just passing through, getting himself comfortable. So it's the next morning for me and the next morning for you. Decided I would do some more painting. I sort of uh, walked away from it yesterday and thought about it and I just, I don't know, I woke up this morning and I think I want to do a little bit more colour adding with these gouache paints. So I've got my sampler here and I've got my water which I'm holding in my hand because I have a pussycat that's cruising around the table. What could possibly go wrong? So I have painted in, see these here, they're stitched by the previous um, lady that owned this tablecloth and of course never finished it. I really like the colour that she's used there so I've matched it up to that and I've painted in that that and a couple over here which then brought me to the purple and I was just working on this little flower and I thought oh my gosh I'm really cruising along now I better turn the camera on so that's where we're at what I'm thinking is I'm going to just continue to dob little bits of color through this whole scene and then once it's dried the next video will be stitching bits of colour through the whole scene. So that's where I'm at. Pussy's about to leave. Okay, good. All is safe on the table. Gosh, he was so restless yesterday. I couldn't decide if I'd be posting this video in a week's time or literally the day after. And I decided I would... Uh, post it the day after because then we got the painting all done and then next time we get together on this project I presume you can all see clearly yep um, we would you know be stitching I can put these paints away so the electrician came yesterday and fixed the oven the oven is working heaven forbid the right cable and the right circuit. Bob's your uncle. We have an oven. And I tried it out last night. And yes, it roasted. So it's great. Now, where, what else will we do? I feel like I could do something with these guys. And I really like that turquoisey blue colour there. I hope I'm not painting colours that I just don't own threads to. That would be a bit disappointing. I might go row number seven, turquoise. I think the secret too with this gouache paint is to, yes, add water to them, but then give it a moment to sort of slush around so it's just not as wet. And therefore it's not running as much does take a little longer to you know get your color down because it's a little bit drier so I just think I'll put a daub of this in the center and then I can bead it in stitch it in and then uh, leave it at that I'll do the same on the other one just a daub That'll sort of set the tone for the flower. I don't know what I'll stitch around, but I just want to throw that in as just a, a colour palette. Very good. Now, I'm going to rework some of these um, leaves. Now, number eight. Row eight, second paint down. Just want to... Oh, I think it might be too bright. No, I'm not going to do that. It's a total different colour. I might get that pencil pack out again. And I just want to have another play. I'm really enjoying this. To be bringing paint into stitch is rather fun. 
How many of you have dug out your paint sets or gone and grabbed the kids' paint sets? Leaf green. Just want to be a little bit more defined in my colour. I guess a little braver. Hey, Fudgy. He's just had his breakfast. Now he's coming over to tell me all about it. Just be bolder with our paint. It's a little bit gentle yesterday. Are you going to jump up, Fudge? Nope. I'm going to take this water over here just for a wee moment. High risk having a pussycat around who likes to jump up and say hello. Just putting a little bit more pigment in <clears throat> and I'm following the vein of the leaf. I just felt like I was colouring in the wrong direction that I could do a little bit better job and be a bit bolder with my moves. Yeah, fudgy. Look at him, he's gone back and he's having a drink of water. Okay. Now, <clears throat> a very, very damp tape brush just to soften it, but not too much water. That's better. Just a little. It really is about getting to know your um, paints and your fabrics. A bit of experimenting, isn't it? <clears throat> but at the end of the day, Corinne, it's only fabric. So don't be, don't be shy. Get in there and just have a go. Nope, he's off for a walk. He's left the room. Dad's still in bed asleep, so he's probably heading off now to... He does want to go outside, but it's a bit drizzly, rainy, so he can't get his usual. Walk around the backyard. Fudgy. Oh, he's chatty this morning. Here he comes again. I don't know if that was a good idea, calling him over. There we go. That's great. Now with a bit of stitch in there as well, I should be able to match those colours really well. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get back to the pansies. Now, I've got my cat. Here comes a cat. Oh, you guys must think this girl's crazy having a cat trotting around here. Around the area with paints. She's crazy. I just want to have a Google of some painted watercolour pansies. Let me just see what we can find. I just want to get some colour combinations. Watercolour pansies come on keep us keep walking keep walking that's it he wants to be on my lap that's what this is all about this is about mum why aren't we sitting down and stitching images oh here's a good picture Okay, let's get that up. Oh, I'd say someone's digital print. We better not do that. Let me put the word free in front. 
and get into some pictures. See, there's a purpley one. We could do that. There's a lot of yellow in pansies. Okay. All right. Where's my paintbrush gone, Fudgy? Let's get this guy. How to paint watercolor pansies. See this purple and yellow one here? That's what I'm aiming for. And I'm going to use that violet color. Now, can you see my sampler? I'm gonna aim for these violet colors, these yellows, I think. So, let's get my, this guy here. Budgie. Degree of difficulty, painting pansies whilst keeping one eye open on a pussycat. So getting this violet in first. So for those of you out there that know how to paint and regularly watercolor paint, you're probably just shaking your head at my technique here. I'm a puddler. I'm a painting puddler. I've done quite a few courses, but yeah, you know, when you leave the course and you go, what did I really learn? Let's give this a little bit more. And unless you're doing it all the time, you sort of, you lose the little techniques that you're showing and the layers and the what to do first. So take the pressure off yourself and just have a go, I say. If it doesn't look right, we've got options at the end. We can cover it in stitch. We can cover it in fabric. No one will ever know that we've been puddling around. I'm gonna get that darker in there. Let's be brave, Corinne. Let's just put some, we can always come back and. Just softening out those edges now with a little bit of water. Well, it looks like a pansy to me. All right, we need a yellow. Which yellow are we going to go for? I'm thinking the second one underneath that white we could probably even bring a bit of white in as well when I first thought you know pansy I'm thinking oh gosh I grew up with pansies there were a lot of pansies around it doesn't really excite me as a flower to stitch but I'm thoroughly Enjoying our little pansy, pansy thing happening here. I'd forgotten just how, how beautiful they are. There's so many colors. I used to love it when we'd buy punnets of flowers all the time as kids. Very affordable, a lot of fun to plant. And, um, Pansies and petunias were the punnets of choice for our family because of where we lived in the climate. Oh, my phone's just gone. There's little touches of purple around the tip, around these tips. So I'm just gonna play a little bit and pop in a bit of this purple. Yeah, punnets of pansies and petunias were a definite must in the garden because they just survived the environment that uh, we lived in. And um, tough, tough little flower they are. Oh, they fudgy. So I was sort of a little bit over pansies and Petunias, you know, being it was a 
Uh, what am I doing? Concentrate, I need yellow. So when um, Susanna picked pansy, I'm like, oh gosh, good old pansies, common old pansies. But I do recall as a kid, really excited when those black ones popped up in the pack. They were always mixed pansies. And there was one that was not quite black, nearly the burgundy, burgundy black. And I used to get so excited as a kid that we had a black one. I'm gonna try and pop a bit of yellow in this center. Probably should have left that unpainted, but I think this gouache paint with a few layers is going to allow me to come back through there. I think the purple could go right up the top of that top petal. I'm going to be braver. I don't know if I'm getting braver or I'm getting getting cockier. <laughs> It'll only end bad, won't it? It'll end badly. Just going to swish a little bit more paint through the top of that pansy. There's some great flowers coming up, guys. Even if you don't do all the flowers and you see one that we've selected for the, the month and it, you've always wanted to have a stitch of it or a paint of it, just do the one flower. I'm gonna make that one big leaf. There we go. We have another pansy. Probably could wash a little bit more of that into there. That purple into the yellow, but I don't mind it. Maybe I'll throw in a little bit more yellow from another color just to get it, punch it up a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Just felt like it needed a little bit more solidness to the paint. Is that a word? There we go. Walk away, girl, walk away. We have a pansy. All right, let's have a look for another pansy, another color combination. Mm, pinks. Oh, I don't know if I like that one. That sort of doesn't really remind me of pansies. Let's have a look for some more images. Yeah, see that, that guy there, that's a classic, isn't it? What about one that's more blues? Oh, that's an Etsy person's image too. Nope. Oh, here's one. Look at that picture. Step by step on how to paint realistic pansies. That's what we need. We might aim for this guy. We can go into the hot pinks with a little bit of purple in his throat. Okay, let's go. Oh, make this one a hot pink one. These are bold. Let's aim for number five row top paint. So we might start out here. Oh, so bold. dries really quick this squash paint tell you what a bit of a fan did I mention that 20 times I've seen a few people use them on YouTube and I was like oh, I must 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 invest in some and then it wasn't till I did the um, Fleur Woods course that she pulled them out and I'm thinking seen those before and because I had made time to actually do the course and follow it through and you know participate properly where sometimes when you're watching YouTube videos they're just like a fleeting 
a fleeting thought that comes into your mind and then it's gone. But because I was like in a class actually concentrating, um, I was like, those gouache paints, there they are again. And Fleur uses them all through her work to bring desired colour into what she's stitching. Sometimes you just can't find the right colour or the right fabric or, and using paints is a really good way of, you know, getting, getting what you want, where you want it. So that's what then made me say, right, just go and get yourself these paints. You've seen them before. You've seen others using them. And I only used a tiny little bit of painting in my Fleur Woods piece, because I did two. The big piece, I didn't use any paint. It was all about threads, textiles, stitching. But um, the one small little flower I did, and oh, that lit, lit something in me. So, I was chatting to Susanna and I was like, I so want to do a floral stitchery that is just all about exploring the different flowers that are around us. And her eyes lit up. So we sort of mulled on it for probably a month or two. And then it just all came together and here we are. Pick a flower and just Turn the flower over six times as we look at every aspect of the flower. Some of them on the list, I really like like the center of the flower, more so than the actual flower. It's really odd. So I'd like to just explore that and stitching just, you know, an aspect of the flower. There's a couple that I've chosen that have bulbs at the bottom of them. And I've never really stitched a bulb on a flower. And I thought, wow, that, um, now that would be real botanical study. If we focus on, I'm just getting my phone back. It's lost its image. Don't leave me now, phone. Now we'll mix up, I think we'll go the real no, I think we need to do a different purple. I think we'll go this one, guys. I don't know if you can even see it. This one at the bottom. So I'm really looking forward to the flowers that have a bulb at the bottom. I think they'll be interesting to stitch because you start thinking about all the fibers that we can add and you know the mushroom that um, the girls did for the, the Roxy Creation Girls, the Roxy Girls for the Christmas stitcheries and they did their little three-dimensional mushroom. Now I did him myself because I've never really stitched a mushroom other than flat onto a piece and that was using crocheting as my base. And um, it was around the time that that was all happening that Susanna and I were chatting about our selection of flowers and I had done the mushroom and I'm like, see the bottom of this mushroom where there's all these little fibers coming in? Um, the bulbs, the flowers with bulbs, that's all about those little, little bits and pieces that are attached to the, I'm concentrating, can't you tell? <laughs> I'm just gonna put a bit of white in. I feel like my pansies got quite overpowered. So I'm just gonna bring, ooh, ooh, ooh. gee, that's bold. Just a bit of white through. Let's see what that does. Um, yeah, so bulbs, at the bottom of a flower just adds something new to sort of study, think about. Not loving this pansy as much. 
That's okay. Stitch and beads will soon sort him out. This is better with the white coming in. He's not so blobby, is he? Have a bit of white bouncing around his edges. That's better. Bit more white. That's got better. Get a bit of white in here. There we go. Now we've got one more over here. Might do a bluey, purpley. Get a little bit of blue happening. And we might do a bit more white. experimenting now playing with color I don't think this little guy appears in nature <laughs> I will if I blend that blue a little bit better that's a bit better that's better and then softly take it out Too much water, girl. Catches back in his hammock. He's quietened down. He's had his breakfast. He's done his whole meow meow around the house. And now he's happy to have a nap because he's realised that I'm not sitting down. So he's settled. some color in now I just wanted to pop a little bit of color on these guys just a just a little bit just to lead the way on um, I don't know if they're even in shot. I hope they are. Just a little bit. It's hard to stop. Good thing about this squash paint that once I've puddled around in the paint, very quickly dries, which is good because it's got that chalkiness in it. It's allowing me to not make too much of a mess. What other ones have we got? Not a lover of that guy. He got out of hand, didn't he? What happened if I put a bit of orange in there? That's better. Pansies are real tonal, aren't they? A little bit better. Might stitch orange into him when it comes to stitching. It's a little bit too pink for my liking. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I saved the pansy. Okay. That's looking good. I wonder about that green there. So I've just noticed this guy. I wonder what he would do. Oh, look at that. How 
bold is he? Oh. Mm. Okay. Another leaf colour in amongst the leaves. It's a bit of a dark spin on it, doesn't it? Just going to play a little bit with the leaves. Mixed it up a little, hasn't it? Just to try different ways of applying it. A little bit darker, a little bit darker. Not as dark. Mix that. Very interesting. These little ones could have then a dob of paint on them as well, just a little bit. You'd be thinking, she's not going to stitch anything here. She just can't put the paintbrush down. Aren't they bleed just a little bit? I sort of want that shadowy, bleedy look through the piece. And then I stitch mm. getting brave now, aren't I? Not that the pansy branches go like that. They're sort of on their own accord standing, aren't they? And they have that curve. Here we go. Now to blend it a little, I should really come down here and play down here as well in the original and just pop a little bit of paint through just to loosen up the embroidery because we're not doing that old-fashioned embroidery we're doing a little bit looser and bringing mixed media elements into it there's some embroidery already there. Might leave it at that, I think. We've got a bit of paint just swished around. Might just do a little bit over on that stem. Um, 
my typical watercolour, you can come back over where you've just been and just add a little bit extra. And build it up. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, let's have a look at the time. See where we're at, because I'll keep puddling. It's 35 minutes. Ugh. We can keep puddling. I feel like I want to do a little bit more on these next. Maybe I'll bring some white into them and blend it out. And then when I stitch it, I can start dark and maybe stitch out into a parlor tone. So I sort of want to do a bit of this. And then we might call it quits, I think, because the girl needs to stop puddling around here before she paints the whole thing, <laughs> which I think I'm sort of doing, aren't I? I love how there's a little bit of colour there for me. You know when you thread paint a piece of fabric that's printed by the artist before you? Those colours that are laid down help you with your choices of colours. And I think this will do the same sort of thing. It'll give me a bit of a, um, what's the word? Inspiration for a flower. There's going to be all these real flowers in amongst a heap of fake, fake flowers. Having said that, that might actually be from a real flower. It's just that I don't know enough about real flowers to pick up on it. So I'm just bleeding that white back to the center. All right, let's do the other one. Now, be warned, I am going to be quite abstract with my stitch. I'm not going to be formal as in um, satin stitch and things like that. I really want to just mark make stitch, be looser in my stitching. Whatever that means. Some of the, the words that they use these days, all the artists. Okay, just come on white, give us some white. So I have to let this dry now. And then next week, I'll pick up those threads and we will start stitching. I might have a little stitch before I get to you guys, just so we see where I'm heading, get my thoughts around it all. I don't usually like doing that. I sort of like just winging it with the camera on. But we'll see. If I come back and there's no threads in it, you know I'm winging it. Okay, and just blend that back down in there now, just so that that centre bleeds out a little bit because we're adding moisture again. There we go. Right, put down the paintbrush, girl. Really like him. I like him. Not so much him. Not so much him. But we're stitching, so I think that just became a big blob. I'll, I'll fix that up, the stitch, I think. Okay, all right, guys. That's enough for one day. I need to let that dry. And then we're ready to play. Oh, lovely. Gosh, and I haven't even got, you know, fibres and threads and fabrics. I'm just pulling a piece of fabric out. Like, we start stitching bits and pieces into it. Oh, can't wait. All right, guys. So 40 minutes, that's a bit short today. 
I'll, um, I'll finish the video here, but if I pop back, we, you know, that it dried and I'm into it. But um, I, think, I think that's enough for today. I really want it to dry properly. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Have a lovely day. Get your paints out. Even if you don't have a pre-printed piece of fabric like this, just grab a piece of fabric, throw down some lines, throw down some paint, let it dry, and then stitch into it and see what happens. It's a lot of fun. All right, guys, look after yourselves. Have a great day. Bye.